well, I have to put in this 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 waiver, this release of liability, this this information to tell you that I'm I'm just an old codger, and um, a lot of times I'll quote things and uh, I might get the dates wrong or misspell the name or uh, I didn't go to Harvard. In fact, I didn't even get a bachelor's degree when I went through college, and in, in fact, I don't care. Okay. So I'm just letting you know up front that that uh, the content of what I'm saying I believe in, and you can probably research and find out. But if I claim that the King James Version of the Bible was written in the 17th century by a group of people that uh, King James uh, de delegated the authority to do that, and it turns out that uh, it wasn't the 17th century, it was the 16th century. Okay, well, fine then, you know, I concede that. But the content, the value of what I'm trying to talk about is not when he did it as much as what it is that he did. Okay, so I already know in advance because when I get to rambling on, um, I don't have the um, velocity to go out and get the specific quote and show it to you on some clip that comes in because I'm not a professional filmmaker. I'm just a guy sitting in a room. This isn't my mother's basement or even my grandmother's basement, and I'm not in my pajamas. But I am on the first floor of this building. So anyways, that is my introduction. Okay, and here's what I'm staring at when I turn my head away. I pull the, the camera is mounted because I jam it underneath the television set. Now I'm turning it towards what I'm reading, okay? And what am I looking at other than the video of what we're talking about, I'm I'm looking at a screen on a computer, okay? There's the keyboard, and there's the computer. Uh, there's the television set up there where I jam this camera. It's a very sophisticated operation here. So you get that through your head in this video. And if you're going to criticize the video for its professional content, have fun. <laughs> Page that I'm reading that's biblehub.com and it's the King James Version of the Bible and it's 1 Corinthians. There's the book within the Bible because there are 66 books in the Bible, 44 different authors who wrote the Bible, not just one guy. They were all humans like you and me, and they were imperfect like you and me, and they were as it is written in the Bible, inspired by God in the things that they wrote. And this is one of them. This is one of the men. He actually was writing a letter to the Church of Corinthian, Church of Corinth, in advance of his arriving there, talking about issues. He wasn't writing the Bible. He was writing a letter to the church. And then, at least uh, in the by the time King James came along in the 17th century, they took the Apostle Paul's writings and put them into a book called the Bible. Anyways, that's what I'm reading. Now, here's the words that I'm reading, okay? In Christ, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. But every man in his own order. So I saw this next part in vision. <clears throat> Christ the first fruits afterwards they that are Christ at his coming then comes the end when we have da 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 I saw that happen man so I'm inspired by God I'm inspired by somebody um, I don't take hallucinogenic drugs so um, I consider myself as inspired as this man this man claims not even to be worthy of being an apostle. He says in verse 9 of this particular 
chapter in this book, 1 Corinthians, for I am not the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, or I am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, meaning that's what he did. He went out and killed Christians. That was his job in Rome until he came face to face with God who knocked him on the ground and put him in division and then he had a change of heart and he turned away from killing Christians and began to support Jesus Christ who coincidentally was ministering that's the story behind the Apostle Paul he didn't even claim to be worthy of it yet here he is in the Bible So <clears throat> the visions that I've had are either uh, from the devil, uh, from my own mind, or from God. And I test it as best I can to determine whether or not it's valid or not. But I take the, um, whatever the vision is that I have, um, and then I go to the Bible and I research the concepts that come out of that vision to find out if they're hogwash. And I don't even know what hogwash is, do you? I mean, hogwash, I guess, is something you feed the pigs. It's pretty nasty stuff. That's my assumption, which is all it is on hogwash. But uh, I'll take whatever I see and then go to the Bible to see if I can validate it and so far it's uncanny I've been able to validate everything um, and it it basically changes my point of view on on interpreting the Bible uh, as far as an understanding you know because for 30 years more than 30 years I've read the Bible <coughs> and um I'm taught by other men what the Bible means and I do the same thing either accept it or I don't but the fact is I've, I've got like a watered-down version of the kingdom of God and it's a compilation of me and what I study and what other people teach me and I'm finding in my my older age a lot of that's not true um if you take the, the vision and um, embed it into your potential answers uh, in the Bible, I get like a better understanding that conflicts with those things, uh, such as uh, the soul. The man became a living soul. Well, what was he before he was a living soul? Was he just a dead piece of flesh on a table? And then God somehow, specifically there, breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. Um, but when I was in the vision, I saw Adam was already alive before God breathed into him the breath of life. And he became a living soul. Because the breath of life... In the Bible doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't alive before he breathed it into him because that breath of life is spiritual the soul is a spiritual thing the soul is not like a coin that you you know let's put that tattoo on him and that's the soul you know a soul is not a tangible physical realm identity the soul is a connection between you and the spiritual world between you and the kingdom of God that's what the soul is because you know I don't believe puppy dogs have souls they don't become a living soul when when the mother dog has the puppies and the puppies fall out on the ground and then the dog laps up all this nasty hogwash stuff and then the puppies crawl around and start to whine and 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 feed off the mother's milk you know, they don't have a soul. They, they don't. Only we have souls. 
because it's not a physical thing. It's spiritual. And the Apostle Paul in another writing it also said that through one man, everybody sinned, you know. The first man, Adam, was from the earth, and the second Adam, who was referred to Jesus Christ, is from heaven. Well, but wait a minute. Um, all men came out of a mother except for Adam, the theory. Um, all men were born of a woman. Well, Jesus was born of a woman, too. He came out of a womb, out of Mary's womb. So why is he not considered of the earth? And the answer is because the soul is not of the earth. The soul is something that God put in us. Is there such a thing as a male soul and a female soul? Because if that's the case, I don't understand. Eve was created from Adam's rib, according to the Bible. God pulled the rib out of Adam and made a woman. Well, he didn't breathe into her the breath of life. And he didn't do any of that. He just made her. And she was alive all of a sudden. How come they left that part out? Because the soul is not physical. Anyway. Why did I go there? Because this whole entire video is about the soul, about your future. There's so many misconceptions in Christianity. I call it this. You have the theory of Christianity, and you have the theory of evolution. Okay? And you choose which one you want. Do you want the theory of Christianity, or do you want the theory of evolution? Because they're both hogwash. They really are. There's only one truth, man. One. And we're going to get there.